What's up sneaker fans, thanks for tuning in to a more than hype unboxing and review and today we'll be taking a look at the LeBron 18s. Now at the time of filming we are in the midst of the NBA Finals in the bubble, a heartbreaking end of the game loss for LeBron and the Lakers but game 6 is tomorrow and we'll see if LeBron in his 17th season can get another ring. On the flip side of this, that always means we get a new LeBron signature silhouette and today, I present you with the LeBron 18 in this Reflections colorway. Before we get into the unboxing, don't forget to subscribe for more sneaker related content. Now, let's get into it, starting with the packaging. The design always starts here with the box, and with the LeBron signature, you know every detail is considered. Two-tone brown box with this printed tape that reads, LeBron 18 in Roman numerals, Nike 2020, 2021, just do it. BBZ, initials of LeBron's kids, and 330, a shout out to LeBron's hometown of Akron, Ohio. You also get engineered to the exact specifications of LeBron James here. Let's take a look at the size tag. So in these, I got an eight and a half, and I like the fit. Definitely tight in the toes, which I'll get into a little bit later, but lengthwise, these are true to size. Now, taking a look inside, plain white paper here, and finally, a look at the shoes. Now, first impressions, definitely my favorite LeBron in a long time. I'm glad this line is moving away from the totally knit upper. From a shoe design perspective, there's only so much you can do with the alternating knit patterns and colors, so I'm glad to see that we have a few different materials being used. It adds a nice contrast and depth into the design of the shoe that's hard to achieve with those completely knit uppers. In my opinion, the best looking LeBron since the 10, but all these extra pieces do add weight, so this is definitely not a light shoe, uh, but the level of cushioning that you get inside the shoe might just justify that weight. Let's get both pairs out and take a closer look, starting with the upper. Okay, so from the pictures, I didn't realize these were going to have mismatched colors, but they in fact do, alternating in bleached aqua and topaz gold on everything from the laces, the midsole, the tongue details. And on this tongue, there are a couple things to note. So for one, the material itself, what it feels like is a really thick or maybe just multiple layers of hyperfuse. And with that, you do get a couple of diamond cutouts for ventilation. We can also see that it's printed with the reflections like graphics. Instead of bagging this with foam though, the cushioning is coming from these new small bags of air integrated into the tongue. On the top airbag, you have the LeBron line graphic actually printed on the, the, the back of it. On the middle, you have written there air and on the bottom you have LeBron's signature. To me, these small airbags didn't add much cushioning for pressure when lacing up, but they are translucent enough for you to show off your socks. So, there's that. And that's not a dig at Nike, that's actually what they have on their website. Next, this black Knit Pasta 2.0 upper feels strong, with the obvious benefit of being breathable while still being durable. I don't think these could take the same beating as, say, a foam posit. However, you'd be hard pressed to rip through these, in my opinion. One thing to note, the upper gets very narrow around the toe here, as you can see from this side view. You can see how flat this area is that makes it really tight in the toes. But this is a performance focus shoe, so I can see why they made that design choice. On the sides, you get two different types of fly wire. So, what we're kind of used to in black, but you'll notice alternating with those, there's a these thicker lines of fly wire going through. And upon further inspection, these thicker pieces of fly wire is actually pieces of laces themselves, was, which I thought was kind of bizarre to be honest. Uh, that they'd be cutting up pieces of laces and sticking them in the upper like that. And it's the same on both shoes. So this yellow pair has yellow laces integrated into the upper and this pair with the blue laces has blue laces for those thicker fly wire pieces. Interesting design choice. I don't think I've seen on any LeBron before. 
Now on the heel, we get a closer look at the reflections graphics through this clear TPU heel counter. Small accent pieces matching the midsole as well. On one side here, on it is written from the city of Akron, Ohio, and then an applied uh, textured swoosh on the medial side. On the other pair, it says established 1984, and then another applied swoosh there. Inside the heel, you get a lot of padding to keep your foot in place, and it is made of a different mesh material as well, uh, just a note. And on the insole, on the inside, we get our best look at the reflections graphics yet. And just a few pieces that I recognize from the top. We have a graphic of a crown, probably referring to LeBron James's moniker as King James. Uh, some basketball hoops for obvious reasons. Dunkman logo. These look like some lions in the background. A chain link fence. And here I can kind of see chosen one. Uh, which is uh, one of uh, LeBron's tattoos and that famous Sports Illustrated magazine that dubbed him the Chosen One. Uh, some chains, a star probably also referring to Chosen One. And then some tire tracks here referring to Akron, Ohio, at one time being known as the rubber city of the world. A couple of LeBron silhouettes with this exact inspiration uh, have been released and towards the bottom 23 uh, obviously is his number and the lion logo at the end with LeBron's signature at the bottom so a lot going on here and it is a it's just an ortholite insole pretty thick but that brings us to the tech inside and why this is a little bit less important but I'll leave that right there so one really big perk of this shoe is how massively cushioned it is in the back, you get this huge Max Air unit, full length zoom airbag on the inside, and carrying that, this soft foam in the forefoot, which feels to me like Cushlon. If we take a look on the inside, you can actually kind of see the impression of where that zoom airbag lives. I think with LeBron this late in his career, putting as much cushioning in this new silhouette was a top priority. We can see that manifest here with all these different types of tech mashing together. Lastly, we have the outsole with a few small details. To start, the traction is sort of split in two with a more traditional grid-like pattern here and then this interesting wavy boxy pattern with these nubs towards the heel. You also get these cutouts to preview the tech that's inside so here you can actually see the bottom of that zoom airbag uh, in the forefoot and then the bottom of the max airbag here in the heel. If we take a look at both of these shoes together, we'll see that it is also mismatched in color. And in the middle here, we see a one. Here we see an eight referring to this being the 18th LeBron silhouette and the LeBron James crown logo here. Overall, I'm really happy to see that the LeBron line is moving away from strictly knit uppers to using a few different materials in the design of the shoe. In the past few years, I've noticed that footwear manufacturers have shifted with the times away from fashion in the basketball segment and more towards performance. I just don't see as many people wearing basketball shoes casually as I used to. And Nike was a big part of that movement. The last great casual LeBron, in my opinion, was the 10, maybe the 11, but after that, it really started going downhill. So I'm happy to see the LeBron design team sacrifice a little performance for style. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.